He came soon. This video is going to be on drawing ionic compounds. Okay, so first thing, difference between ionic and covalent compounds. So ionic versus covalent. Ionic compounds means they both have ions in them. So it's a metal. So remember, metals are everything left of the stair steps. So ionic compounds would be a metal bonded to a non-metal. So one of these elements, a metal over here, which all want to get rid of electrons. Usually they want to get rid of one, two, or three electrons. So it's a metal bonded to a non-metal over here that wants to gain electrons. So those are ionic compounds. And really the metal is giving electrons to the non-metal. They're forming a bond together, like NaCl or CaCl2 or ZnO. Okay, covalent compounds. So NaCl would be a good example of that. Or um, FeO. So something with a metal, non-metal, metal, non-metal. Non um, or MgI2, okay? Those are all ionic compounds. Covalent compounds. Covalent molecules have two nonmetals in them. So just those elements bonded together. For example, like C6H12O6, which is glucose, or carbon dioxide. Okay. Both things are right of the stair step for covalent compounds. And strangely enough, there's a lot more covalent compounds on Earth than there are ionic ones, even though there's a lot of metals. Um, but most things that are in living things are covalent compounds. So right now, all we're going to worry about is ionic compounds. A metal with a non-metal combining. Okay, metal with non-metal. So let me change up here. So this is going to be on drawing what's called Lewis structures or structural formulas. Okay, Lewis structures or structural structural formulas. And these are binary ionic compounds, meaning it's just two elements together, a metal with a non-metal, metal, non-metal, metal, non-metal. Non okay, so it's always something left of the stair step that is positively charged with something right of the stair step negatively charged. So first thing, we're going to draw these, okay? We're going to draw them. So I'll, I'll pick out a few of these to do. Um, first one here, magnesium oxide. So when I say draw, and you can draw wherever you want to on here. Um, so I'm going to draw it out here. Magnesium. So look on your product table. It's in family two, so it's got two valence electrons. Remember, it wants to get rid of those two electrons. It wants to give them away. That means it usually forms two bonds. Okay, a bond is what holds two elements together in a compound. Oxygen has six valence electrons, which means it wants to gain two electrons. So magnesium wants to get rid of two electrons. Oxygen wants to gain two electrons. So they work out perfectly. Okay, so we're going to draw bonds. Bonds contain two electrons. Again, bonds contain two electrons. And this is an ionic bond. Magnesium, it, the metal, is giving electrons to the nonmetal. So wherever there's unpaired electrons, make a bond between those. So that, that bond has two electrons in it, one from magnesium, one from oxygen. These two electrons can form a bond, two electrons in the bond. Your non-metal, the thing, the second element should always have eight electrons around it. So two, four, bond counts is two, bond counts is two. So two, four, six, eight. The non-metal always have that. The metal is always getting rid of its electrons. There should never be any unshared electrons. Okay, these are unshared electrons, not in the bonds. So that's your structural formula. That's the structure, the dots in the bonds or the Lewis structure. The chemical formula would just be MgO. In other words, there's one magnesium and one oxygen. But you don't normally put those in there when you're doing that. Um, let me do aluminum nitride. Now let me skip that. Let me go down. Let's do potassium sulfide. So potassium has one valence electron. Remember, it wants to get rid of that. Sulfur has six valence electrons. Remember, you're just getting the valence electrons from the family they're in. Okay, so whatever their family they're in in the parent table is where you get your valence electrons. So potassium wants to get rid of one electron, but sulfur wants to gain two. So potassium can give sulfur this electron and they can make a bond. Remember, two electrons in the bond. But sulfur really needs to gain another electron. So in that case, there would be another potassium involved. 
that also has an electron to get rid of. So these two electrons can form a bond. Remember, there's two electrons in a bond, one from each element. And potassium is giving its electrons to sulfur. Your non-metal should have eight electrons around it. Two in that bond, two in that bond, two unshared, two unshared has eight around it. Metals are getting rid of them. So your formula here would be K2S, potassium sulfide, kind of like water's H2O. Two atoms of potassium combined with one atom of sulfur. They both get to their eight valence electrons by potassium giving away its electrons and sulfur gaining. If you see a Roman numeral, okay, it's like copper, copper's in these transition elements. They have multiple number of valence electrons they can have. So the Roman numeral tells you the valence electrons. So copper's got one valence electron, tin's got two valence electrons. Oh, tin and lead will also have different numbers. Iron's got three valence electrons. Lead's got two, lead's got four there. So a few elements can have different numbers of valence electrons. That's what that is telling you in that case. So let's do, I'll pick one out. Let's do iron three chloride. So that three means that iron has three valence electrons in this case. Because the elements, the transition elements have different, they can move their electrons around from the S and the D to have different numbers of valence electrons. So one, two, three for iron. So it wants to get rid of those three electrons, which means it wants to form three bonds. Chlorine has seven valence. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So chlorine really wants to gain one electron. Well, iron's got three to give. It cannot give all three of them to chlorine. It can give one. So we get a bond there between those. So chlorine now has its eight electrons, two, four, six, plus two in the bond is eight. Iron has two more to get rid of, so we need to add another chlorine. Remember it has seven. It's gonna take that electron, make a bond, and another chlorine. And it can take that electron. So iron's getting rid of its three electrons. Each chlorine is gaining one. Our formula, chemical formula then would be Fe, Cl3, the metal's always listed first. Remember, that three does not tell you there's three atoms of iron. It tells you it has three valence electrons in this case. All right, I will do one more. And I'll do one more. And I'm gonna do calcium phosphide. These are kind of a tough one here. So calcium has two valence electrons. I'm gonna, I'm gonna do this one out here. It's gonna take a little space. So I'm gonna do this out here. Calcium has two valence electrons, so I'm doing this one. So he wants to get rid of those two. Phosphorus has got five valence electrons. So he wants to gain three. Well, this is trying to get rid of two electrons. That's trying to gain three, that doesn't work out real well. So calcium can get rid of its two electrons, it can give those to phosphorus. So let's do that. Calcium is gonna give an electron, give an electron, so it forms two bonds. So calcium is, is good, it got rid of its two valence electrons. Remember that gives it eight valence now when it gets rid of its two valence. Phosphorus is not good. It's got two, four, six, seven around it, it really wants to get eight. So let's add another calcium in, which has two valence. Well, phosphorus wants one more electron, so calcium can give that. So there's a bond. So our phosphorus is good. It's got two, four, six electrons in the bonds, plus two there, it's got eight around it. This calcium's good. This one's not good. It's still got one more electron to get rid of. Add another phosphorus in. So we've got another phosphorus, which has five valence, wants to gain three electrons. Well, this calcium has one to give it, but that's all it's got. This phosphorus really needs to gain two more electrons. So we're gonna add another calcium in, and this should be the last one we have to do. Add another calcium in. Sorry, usually I would draw this in a straight line. I kind of drew it all over the place, but another calcium with two valence electrons. It has two to get rid of. Phosphorus wants to gain two more. You notice when I draw bonds, I always draw them to the unpaired electrons rather than the paired electrons. So um, I'll change this one just a little bit here. And, make 
my pair of electrons be over here. Those are unpaired. So you're gonna have a bond and a bond. Okay, I know that looks pretty crazy. If we look here though, calcium has two, two bonds coming off of it, two bonds coming off of it, and two bonds coming off of it. Phosphorus has three bonds plus an unshared pair of electrons, three bonds plus an unshared pair of electrons. So our formula is three calciums, two atoms of phosphorus. It takes three atoms of calcium and two atoms of phosphorus for them to get to an octet to get to eight bands electrons. So try drawing the rest of those and writing the chemical formula. So this is the structural formula or Lewis structure. That is the chemical formula. Good luck.